Good morning, good morning, good morning again to another edition of Inspirational Wednesdays. My name is Minister Al. It's so wonderful. It's such a pleasure. It's such a joy to be able to join you this morning, Wednesday, October 10th, 2013, for another edition of Inspirational Wednesdays. It's our prayer that in the last seven days, God has been blessing you. God has been speaking to you. God has been doing some things in your life. God has been working on you, with you, and through you in such a way that your life has not been the same. Your life has changed. Your life has gotten better. Your life has taking on new meaning, taking on new purpose, taking even on new identity. We are praying for you, praying with you, that God, as he's giving you this newness of life, this newness of purpose, this newness of identity, that you was, are seeing that God does everything on purpose, that God does everything for a reason, that God has ha, has an end, uh, an end in mind for us, and that if we would just trust him, if we would just lean not to our own understanding, but in all ways acknowledge him, we will see that everything we endure, everything we go through, everything we experience, is on purpose. It is by God's plan and that God is t is not doing anything in us that doesn't end up growing us, blessing us, and developing us into the person, into the servant, into the disciple, into the steward that he has called us to be. Amen. It is, again, a wonderful opportunity to be here with you, a wonderful opportunity to share today with you in another edition of Inspirational Wednesday. Let me, again, give a quick overview of our call. We're getting ready to have our opening prayer, followed by our morning devotional. And after that, we're going to get into what I call the best part of our call, which is the prayer section of our call, where you get to share with us what it is you want us to pray with you about, what it is that you want us to intercede with you about, intercede to God about. You know, we also want to receive your prayer, praise reports. I know God has done some wonderful things for you. I know God has blessed you. I know God has completely and absolutely just um, uh, spoken to you, moved in your life, has done things that are worth the honor and the praise. And we want to stand with you. We want to celebrate with you. We want to praise God with you. And during our prayer session call, that's when you get the chance to raise that uh, concern and, 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 and to... Uh, offer your praise and we will praise with you and last but not least if you have a prayer an actual prayer that you want to pray this is your chance to actually pray that prayer pray that prayer not prayer that pray oh my tongue didn't tie i'm just so excited about being with you this morning so with that said let us begin with our opening prayer dear father god we come to you right now thank you for just another opportunity to see another day to be able to stand before you, to be able to sit before you, to be able to kneel before you, God, to be able to invoke your name, to call upon you for assistance, call upon you for mercy and grace, call upon your name, period, just period, God. We bless that. Bless your name. We bless you for giving us this opportunity. And God, we're going to make the most of this opportunity right now as we begin to worship you through praise, prayer, and devotion. So God, be with us. Give us words we need to uh, say that completely articulate what we're feeling, what we're thinking, what we're experiencing as we raise our prayer concerns. God, give us uh, the boldness to be able to share our prayers, share our concerns with one another. And God, help us to be able to praise you by sharing our praise reports, God. It's, we pray that when it's done, you are glorified, we are edified, and that the kingdom is, is, is fortified. God, we pr pray that this prayer in your son's matchless, marvelous, magnificent, and mighty name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Our scriptorial focus for our devotional this morning comes from the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, the 14th through 16th verses, and the 18th through 22nd verses. That's Genesis chapter 6, verses 14 through 16 and 18 through 22. I will read from the New Revised Standard Version of the Scripture. The Word of God is as follows. God said to Noah, Make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its width, 50 cubits, its height, 30 cubits. 
make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubic above, and put the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. You shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing, of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind, two of every kind shall come into you to keep them alive. Also, take with you every kind of food that is eaten and stored up, and it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. Thus far, the word of God. The title for this morning's devotional is Obedience. Obedience. Building the ark was nothing short of a major miracle. Here was Noah an ordinary, average man whose only claim to fame was that he was blameless. Up to this point, all he had ever done was to live his life in a pleasing way to God. Simply put, he was a righteous follower of the Lord. That's it. That's Noah's entire story prior to Genesis chapter 6. What's missing from this story is any indication that Noah was a boat builder or that he even possessed the requisite skill necessary to build a boat like the ark prior to God calling him in our immediate scripture. Looking back over the first five chapters of Genesis, there's no reference to boats. As far as we can tell, no one owns a boat or has ever built a boat. There's no mention that the first people in existence were sea travelers. And this isn't surprising, given the fact that great bodies of water were, reviewed, were viewed as chaotic and destructive. For all intents and purposes, Noah's Ark is the first boat ever constructed. When we read the Bible, the rule of interpretation is that when it states with specificity that something happened in a certain way, that is exactly what it is. There's no room for wondering what things might be if the events weren't recorded as they were. By the same token, when the Bible is noticeably silent on a topic or doesn't give any prior history or facts about a particular person or thing, that is also exactly what it is. We must not second guess the word of God. We cannot fill in the blanks with what we want when we encounter a lack of information or we experience silent space in the word. And the word is notoriously silent about Noah's prior experience with constructing boats. The lack of information about Noah's training and boat building means that all we know about him is that he had no such training. The lack of information about the carpentry, carpentry skills Noah possessed prior to building the ark means that we can only reasonably assume that he had no such skills prior to construction. The only thing we can say for certain about Noah is that he was blameless and that God considered him righteous. Now, if we think building the ark was something spectacular, consider this. God required Noah to keep and take care of every animal then living on the earth. This included both tame and wild animals. Now, I don't know about any of you, but I ain't ever owned a wild animal. Not a wild lion, bear, raccoon, or poodle. I wouldn't know the first thing about keeping a wild animal. I don't even know if I'm brave enough to want to keep a wild animal. To me, there's a very clear reason why, why wild animals live in the wild and I don't. But Noah did the very thing I know I won't do. He willingly kept and cared for both tame and wild animals. And he does so all under one roof and within the strict confines of a boat. Now this should be encouragement for many of us this morning. God has called each and every one of us to accomplish a major task in terms of constructing and maintaining his earthly kingdom. The problem for many of us is that we have no prior experience or training in terms of what he has called us to do. Our inexperience and or lack of training creates a mental barrier within us because we don't know how to do exactly what it is God has tasked us with accomplishing. We automatically believe that it's impossible. 
We label the spoken word of God an impossibility and we immediately turn and try to run away from him and his calling upon our lives. Yes, Noah had no prior experience. Yet Genesis chapter 6 verse 22 states that he did all that God commanded him to do. Noah followed every direction the Lord gave him, thereby enabling him to do the impossible in his life. That's the first thing that we must do in order to accomplish the callings God has assigned to us. We must be obedient. In other words, we must do. Whatever it is that God has instructed us to do, we must do exactly that. God instructed Noah to build the ark and to put and keep within it every animal that he brought to Noah. And that's exactly what Noah did. He built the ark and placed every scent animal, both tame and wild, inside of it. Now, notice that the Bible doesn't record Noah questioning God about this, about this assignment. He doesn't challenge God whether or not he's sure about what he's doing in terms of Noah's life and the particular task at hand. Noah doesn't second guess the Lord. He also doesn't tell God what he is and isn't going to do. Rather, Noah gets busy doing exactly what the Lord commanded him to do. He tackles the impossible, transforming, transforming it into the possible simply by being obedient. Just maybe, the very impossibilities that God has called us to do will become possible for us when we actually begin doing as he commands. Things are and shall remain impossible for us as long as we fail to engage God where he is and how he has instructed. No impossibility can ever be overcome when we refuse to be obedient to God. Achieving the impossible requires strict obedience to God's explicit instructions for our lives. If impossibilities continue to loom present over and in our lives, maybe we need to ascertain whether or not we're obedient to God. I'm willing to bet that there is a direct correlation in our lives between the impossibilities that overwhelm us and our willful disobedience to what God has commanded us to do. Now, being obedient isn't just what isn't just doing what we're instructed to do. It's also doing what we're instructed to do exactly how we've been instructed to do it. God gave Noah very explicit instructions. The ark was to be built to very specific dimensions. It was imperative that Noah follow these instru these instructions exactly. Every detail in constructing the ark had to be met with particularity because God intended for a very specific number of animals to be kept inside of the ark for a very specific length of time. Being off in one measurement or detail threw everything else off. Therefore, obedience in Noah's context required him to do everything God directed him to do exactly how God directed him to do it. Being obedient spiritually is precisely following every single direction the Lord gives us. There's no skipping over any particular instructions we don't like or feel are unnecessary, nor are we allowed to do it how we think and feel it should be done. In addition, good enough doesn't exist in terms of our service unto the Lord. Accomplishing seven or eight objectives out of a stated total of ten doesn't equal substantial performance. Yes, the world we live in is satisfied with less than perfect, less than fully completed performance, but the world only, only understands substantial performance to be the equivalent of total performance. Now, in terms of our obedience to God, only total performance equals total performance. Nothing less than 100% obedience excuse me, is acceptable to the Lord. What we must take away from this morning's devotional is that nothing God requires us to do is impossible. Everything the Lord calls us to accomplish is absolutely attainable. 
One of the keys to overcoming the impossible is to be obedient to what God has instructed us to do. Obedience opens the doors to all kinds of possibilities. Therefore, if we want to experience a major move of God, then it's imperative that we learn to do what thus says the Lord. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, thank you for sharing with us how we may overcome those things in our lives that we consider impossibilities. You want us to do all things so that we may draw all people to you. You want us to not only praise your name, but to also serve that same name as well. You want us to tackle not just hurdles and situations. You want us to assault predicaments and conquer mountains. In order to do so, we must first learn to be obedient. Your prophet Samuel instructed King Saul that, that obedience is better than sacrifice. And we stand here today believing that to be so. Therefore, we will not just endeavor to do better in terms of our obedience. We will be obedient. We will no longer resist you or the callings you place upon us. We will put the same kind of effort into serving you that we do into questioning you. We will be as quick to engage you, Lord, as we are to second guess you. We will do just as you command and exactly how you command. We want you to say the same thing about us that you said about Noah that we're blameless and righteous. And we realize that for you to do this, we must first be obedient. And possibilities crumble when your people are obedient. So, we're going to be obedient because there are any number of impossibilities that need to crumble in our lives. It's in your son's matchless, mighty, magnificent, and marvelous name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. We just have had our morning devotional. It's our prayer that as you go through today, God would help you to start becoming obedient. That whatever it is God has been calling you, directing you, telling you that you must do, that he needs you to do, that he's requiring you to do, that you would have enough faith to trust God. And if he told you or asked you to do it, that doing it serves a purpose, that doing it is the right thing to do, that doing it does lead to some type of blessing, some type of clarity, some type of understanding that we need, that we uh, have been asking for, that the key to uh, serving God, the key to being righteous isn't how well uh, we pray, it isn't how well we praise, it isn't, it isn't how well we shout, it isn't how well we run around the sanctuary, it isn't how well we sing, it, it isn't even how well we preach. The key to being considered righteous in God's eyes is obedient, doing what he said, doing what he commanded, following his instructions. And I tell you, Israel, Israel's biggest issue in the Old Testament is their disobedience. If they could have just been obedient, many of the things that they experienced, many of the, the issues that they, and the problems that, and consequences and repercussions that they suffered, they would not have suffered if they had just been obedient. With, and, and, and God is saying the same thing to us. Many of the things we go through, many of the things we deal with, many of the things we have to bear, many of the consequences and repercussions that we have to endure are simply because we are not obedient. And God God is saying it is time for us to become obedient, to, to do what he says. If we would just do what he says, life would be so much easier. Life would be so much better. And those very things that we consider to be impossibilities will no longer be impossible. The very impossibilities sitting before us will become possible. We'll find ourselves doing the impossible before our very eyes and before the eyes of others. And it happens when we are obedient. So it's our prayer that as you go through today, that as you are uh, uh, walking through the day, as you are talking, as you are serving, that God, you would allow God's spirit to rest upon you and you will be obedient to whatever uh, God instructs you to do and instructs us to do and that you would trust God that whenever he gives us the, that instruction that it is for a purpose, that it is um, uh, designed to accomplish some kind of kingdom building activity and that, that uh, you are an active participant 
uh, and a faithful servant to God by being obedient. Amen. Amen. It is now time for our prayer session of call. This is that part of the call that I personally love because this is the part of the call that you get to participate in, that you get to join in, that you get to jump right in with both feet. You know, this is the part where we get to lift our prayer concerns, our prayer requests, even our prayers and our praise reports to God. You know, this is why we have this call. We we have this call so that we can have a, 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 a vehicle for the people of God and even persons who want to get to know God and the free pardon of their sins to be able to stand with like-minded believers, stand in a place that is safe and secure and to be able to raise your prayer concerns, your prayer issues, your, your fears, your doubts, your worries of God in such a way that you know God would hear, God would be receptive, and God would move on your behalf. Now let me address this issue because I had someone come and ask me before, why do I need to call into your prayer conference call when I can pray myself. Yes, you can pray on your own. Please do not hear us ever saying that you can't pray on your own. However, the word does say that where two or more are gathered in Jesus' name, there shall he also be. So here, this is, this is our thought. If you're by yourself, yes, God hears you. But the word, because Jesus said every word, that, that God's word is true. Paul says, all scripture is truth. It said in Guinea Hebrews that the word is true. And, and Proverbs even says that God's word is everlasting and it's true. So the word is true. Yes, you can pray by yourself. But if you got two or three like-minded servants, like-minded disciples, like-minded stewards who are present with you, then God said he will be actually present with you. So guess what? You got your two or three here with you. And, the, and, and I want you to get out of your mind who else is on the call who may be listening to you who may be worried about what about what you're going to say because the truth is we all got some very big issues i've got some very big issues i got friends who got very big issues we ain't got no time to be looking at you and judging you by your issues we're all trying to get all of our issues to god ourselves so don't worry about it and let me also say this sometimes what i have on my heart i can't always articulate it I know that may be surprising to people, but sometimes there are concerns I have on my heart that I just cannot think of the words that I need to use in order to raise that prayer concern to God. However, God has given you the same prayer concerns. He's placed the same issue on your heart and has given you the words. And so the prayer request you raise may be able to help me raise a prayer request that I can't raise. So don't think that your prayer requests are small, insignificant, unimportant. They are very important. They are very significant. And they're very large. All right. And so this is what we're going to do. We're going to open up the floor. We're going to jump right on in it. Uh, as always, we want you to uh, tell us where you're calling from, who you are, and what you want us to pray with you about, whether it's a prayer request, whether it's a prayer that you want to actually lift, or a praise report, and we'll go from there. And if you are still worried after everything we've said, then just give us your name. I mean, just give us where you're calling from and what it is you want us to pray for you about, and we'll still go from there, all right? So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to get out the way. We're going to open up the floor. If you have a praise report, prayer request, or prayer, tell us where you're calling from, who you are, and we'll go from there.